Yeah, g'day, it's Charlie ZL2 CTM. Well, I've had a chance to have a bit of a play around with the IF amplifiers for this simple SCB rig, um, I mean, which I want to talk about tonight. Um, I've got quite a few things, unfortunately, coming up over the next month or so, which uh, means I'm not quite sure how much time I'm going to have to play around in the shack. So I thought it would be a good opportunity just before that starts to um, have a chat now and have a chat about what I've done and we'll go from there. So what I've elected to do, um, and just a reminder, this is not a tutorial, this is a uh, just a, a log um, of, of what I've done. Um, and what I'm going to do is to use uh, an amplifier which I've used a couple of times now, which as far as I'm concerned for the types of radios that I build uh, works well. It's a, a common emitter um, single transistor amplifier using the, uh, the 2N3904 um, which, like I say, uh, works well for me. I've made up two amps, this is IFM2, uh, that's the IFM1 there, and uh, what I just want to do now is just to go through um, what my thought was, what my thinking was, the approach I took, and just to stress, this is the, just the world according to me, uh, and is definitely not a tutorial. Anyway, so, right, let me just zoom up on this, and um, hopefully uh, it'll, it'll make sense. So like I say, it's a, um, a common emitter amplifier there using the 2N3904. Um, signal coming in there on the base and the output being developed across this transformer here. So two transformers, one for the input and one for the output. Uh, both uh, FT37-43s, uh, nice uh, little simple broadband uh, transformers there. Uh, noting that this is um, only going to be operating at 9 megahertz as an IF amplifier. So, But like I say, nice and easy to get hold of. Um, right, so what I uh, decided to do is I've selected 10 milliamps as the quiescent current passing through this device here because if you look at the spec sheet for the 2N3904, the maximum um, HFE or the DC uh, gain for this particular transistor occurs at 10 milliamps and then drops off uh, as you go below 10 milliamps where you go above 10 milliamps. Um, of course, any higher uh, above 10 milliamps, A, um, I have a drop in HFE, but also I get more noise. So it's a happy medium of um, noise versus maximum HFE. Now the range of HFE uh, at 10 milliamps is 100 to 300. So I'm going to take the geometric mean uh, for my calculations down below. So beta DC is going to be uh, the square root of 100 times 300. That's the range out of the spec sheet which comes out of 173. As I said over here, the, the quiescent current through this device I'm going to set uh, to be 10 milliamps. Right, now, um, because I'm operating this at 13.8 volts, and for the portable rigs, uh, 12 volts because of the battery I'm using, um, for those sort of lowish voltage um, applications, I'm going to set the emitter voltage to be a tenth of VCC, so in this particular case, it's going to be 1.38 volts. Now, the quest, the, that current, the collector current there of 10 milliamps um, is essentially the same as the uh, emitter current. The only difference is the emitter current has got the additional base current through there, which is microamps, which is small anyway. So we can um, essentially say that our emitter current is the same as our collector current. So if that's the case, in order to work out our emitter uh, resistor here, what I've done, I've just taken, well, if the voltage across that and the current through it, I should be able to work out what the, um, the resistance is. So 1.38 volts divided by that 10 milliamps comes out of 138 ohms, uh, and the nearest standard value that I'm going to use is going to be 150 ohms. Right, so make sure I get this in the camera view because it sounds a bit difficult. Right, so the next resistor I'm going to work out is R2, uh, this value here. So it's going to be um, Ohm's law, so I'm going to work out what the voltage is across it, and then divide that by the current through it, which will come out to that value there. So if I'm saying here that the voltage at the base, say again at the emitter, is 1.38 volts, and the, the difference, the potential difference across that emitter base junction is 0.7 volts for a silicon transistor, then um, I can say that 1.38 plus uh, 0.7 uh, comes out at 2.08 volts. So that's going to be the voltage at the base. Uh, might be paper, just come back out a bit. So, 
um, that's the, the, the voltage there. Now the current through this um, I'm going to set to be uh, 10 times the base current. So in order to make this nice and stiff at this point here for a voltage divider biasing of this particular transistor I want to have at least 10 times the base current passing through this combination R1, R2. So if that's the case then uh, noting that also that our base current from over here equals our collector current divided by beta DC. We said our, beta, our uh, collector current was uh, 10 milliamps divided by 173, which comes from over here. Then we can work out what our base current is. So therefore we can substitute all that back into our equation here for uh, uh, working out R2. So 2.08, the voltage across it, divided by 10 times the base current, comes out at 3598 ohms. So the nearest standard value we can take is 3.6 K ohms. Um, if, if no one's interested in these calculations, please skip forward. At the very end, I've got to very quickly sort of look at the um, a quick test. But uh, for those who are interested, this is the approach that I take, right or wrong. Right, so the next one I'm working out is R1. Um, same deal, voltage there minus the voltage there gives me the voltage across it, divided by um, 10 times the base current through here, plus an additional I, I'm, um, electron flow, an additional. Uh, base current gives 11 times the base current there. So again there goes our equation there. Noting that um, I've also got up here a small 10 ohm decoupling resistor between the VCC line and the supply. Um, so 10 milliamps times 10 ohms is only 0.1 volts so I'm going to ignore the voltage drop across that uh, in terms of these calculations which we see down here. So 13.8 volts minus 2.08 so 13.8 volts there minus uh, 2.08, the voltage at the base, divided by now 11 times our base current. Comes out at 18.432 kilo ohms. So I'm going to use the, next, the, the closest standard value, which is going to be 18 k ohms. So now we've worked out our 1, 2, 3 uh, biasing resistors. Um, I've got here notionally uh, 100 nanofarads as the decoupling capacitor. Um, as I've done in the past, I'm, um, I'm going to run this flat out from, from a, uh, an AC point of view. So I'm going to fully bypass um, that emitter resistor. Um, I'm going to choose 100 nanofarads, knowing that at the frequency of operation, which is 9 megahertz, that my capacitive reactance of that is going to be very low. Um, and as we know, our capacitive reactance, Xc, equals 1 over 2 pi Fc. So we can throw in our values just to double check. 2 times pi times 9 megahertz, our IF frequency, noting this is an IF amp, times 100 nanofarads comes out at 0.2 ohms. So that's well and truly a short uh, with regards to uh, 150 ohms. So that parallel com combination there is going to be um, very low. Right, so um, in order to, uh, to, to eventually do our, our transformers, the, um, the input transformers and the output transformers, um, I'm going to need to know what the uh, the input resistances of this particular amplifier. Um, Rn is, is is close enough from an approximation point of view. Uh, R1 in parallel with R2 in parallel with beta AC, so not DC, AC times little re plus big re. Now we know that beta AC, this value here, is our um, FT, our transition frequency, uh, divided by our frequency of operation. So off the spec sheet, uh, FT is 300 megahertz. Uh, this IF amplifier is fixed um, at the IF frequency of 9 megahertz. Comes out with a beta AC of 33.3. .3. So we can start to plug some values in here, noting too that um, little re equals 26 uh, divided by um, the emitter current in milliamps. So it's not 10 milliamps. It's just going to be 10. We, we scrub the uh, the milliamp side of the house, and it's going to be plus zero. So the RE value here is um, equal zero because the RE is fully bypassed by that uh, decoupling capacitor. Um, if there was a, a combination here exposing some of that uh, resistance uh, at the emitter, then that would be reflected through uh, in this calculation here. But in this particular case, it's fully bypassed, so that second part of that expression becomes zero. Uh, work that out comes out at 84 ohms. So therefore from, from a transformer's point of view, now we've got two IF amps, IF1 here and IF amp2 here, 
we've got our first mixer which is dropping down our incoming frequency being mixed with our VFO to produce our IF of 9 megahertz. Uh, we've got our crystal filter which we determined the other day to be uh, 250 ohms uh, as the, um, the, the impedance for inside or the resistance for the input and output. Uh, we've now got our 84 ohms which we determined here and for the output um, rather than doing what I have done in the past which was suggested to use a uh, trim pot uh, to look at the open voltage um, versus uh, using the trim pot to drop that by half to determine what the um, collector load was I'm just going to run with the uh, the general um, rule of thumb that comes out of the solid state design for the radio amateur which is to present to the collector if you go back to this picture here to present the collector uh, 200 ohms so I've got a, uh, a resistance here which through the transformation here I'm going to transform back to look like 200 ohms for that collector um, out of SSDRA the solid state design for the radio amateur radio so um, so the first IF amp here, we've got T1, which is the input side. And as we can see here, it's going to be matching 50 ohms through to 84 ohms. Um, those two uh, mixes that we made up, those two double balance modulators, I'm going to take as uh, 50 ohms. So if that's the case then, we need to work out what our turns ratio is. So N is the square root of 84 divided by 50 ohms, comes out at 1.3. Um, and the approach that I, I do... Um, as I just jot down um, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then multiply 6 by 1.3 equals 7.8, 7 times 1.3 equals 9.1, to try and work out uh, over a range there, um, a, a combination where we're pretty close to a whole number. Um, you can't have with a transformer um, half a turn or fractions of a turn, it's got to be a, um, an integer number. So in this particular case, it'll be 7 to 9. Now the other thing that comes out of solid state design for the radio amateur is um, for the smallest winding we need to make sure that um, its inductive reactance is greater than four to five times the load hanging of it. So what I mean by that is, so I'm going to choose this ratio here, so in order to match 50 to 84 I'm going to use a transformer which is going to be seven turns to nine turns the smaller winding is 7 turns so from a FT37-43 calculator um, 7 turns on an FT37-43 um, in fact I haven't got it jotted down on this bit of paper here uh, comes out at a certain, in fact here it is over here 17.15 microhenries um, and we know that XL equals 2 pi FL so therefore at 9 megahertz 2 times pi times 9 megahertz times that inductance, which is 7 turns, comes out at 969. Um, I needed to make sure that I was approximately equal to or greater than 250 ohms. So 50 ohms times, worst case, 5, 5, 5 to 25. So it had to be greater than that. Big tick, I'm good. So that's T1. T2 here, matching that 200 ohms on the output through to 250. There it goes there, comes out an end of 1.1, same approach, 7, 8, 9, 10, and then that's what we on the, um, the secondary. In this particular case, I'm going to go with um, 8 turns, and I'm going to round that up to, to 9 turns, again, because you can't have uh, fractions. Uh, smaller winding there is 8 turns, 8 turns at 9 megahertz comes out at uh, 12.66 for an FT37-43. I need it to be greater than 1,000 ohms, tick. So that's good. Right, uh, next two is going to be um, for the second IF amplifier, IF number two, and T1 is going to be matching 250 to 84, and T2, the output, just a reminder, T1 and T2, T1 input, T2 output, uh, and T2 for that IF2 is matching 200 to 50. It's the same sort of scenario there, so I won't go through it. Um, comes out at, uh, for T1, a 7 to 12, and then for T2 is going to be a 6 to 12. Um, again, just double checking, the ticks there, I'm, I'm, I'm greater than what I need to be, so it's all looking good. Um, and then just, just below the line here, in terms of the voltage game here, I'm running this flat out, 
Uh, I've got an output over here of um, 700 uh, millivolts RMS. I'm throwing in uh, 10 millivolts RMS, which I confirmed on the scope. Um, so in, term, in terms of a straight voltage gain, um, 700 divided by 10 equals 70, or in dBs, 20 log 70 is 37 dB. Um, at this stage, I'm still... Um, that's, that's all I'm going to do uh, in terms of characterizing this and, and double checking that it's working. Uh, the reason why I'm not going to do anything at this stage is this is the same configuration that I've used in the past. I just thought this time I'd do a little bit more in terms of running through uh, the thinking in terms of the, the, the maths, I guess. Um, and that's where I'm going to draw the line. What I do want to do in the future is get a little bit more, um, more into using um, the SIGGEN and the, uh, this, uh, um, what am I saying here, signal generator. Um, this signal generator has two outputs, so what I want to get in the game is the, the two-tone um, testing, uh, looking at the, uh, the third, third order intercept points um, and other um, products coming out. Interesting enough, uh, from what I can see, and I haven't done any experiments with it at this stage, but I do want to do this at a later date, is I can either take those two outputs here and combine them out of the unit to feed into the radio, or, as I discovered the other day, um, I can actually electronically combine uh, channel 1 and channel 2 within the unit and have, it, have that combined um, signal coming out either 1 or 2. So if that's the case then, I can just take this signal here, which is currently going into the amplifier, um, set up uh, those, those two frequencies to be um, not harmonically related, but not that is, um, and then have that being spat out, and then I can feed the output of the SIGGEN um, and have a bit of a play around. But not going to do this in this particular case. I'm going to save that for um, some experimenting down track. So all I'm going to do at this stage of the game is just stick with what I've done in the past uh, and hopefully, um, if I haven't spoken too fast, uh, the thinking in terms of what I've done for uh, the configuration of the transformers and that makes sense. Again, not a tutorial. I'm more than sure there's inaccuracies uh, and mistakes there, but uh, it's an approach which has worked for me in the past. Uh, and I'm certainly going to do that again in this particular case. Uh, and the reason for that is because, as far as I'm concerned, it is such a simple little uh, amplifier to build up, um, and it's performed well for me in the past. Okay, I'll say 73, and uh, apologies at this stage um, if the next video is going to be a little bit down track. Um, like I say, I'm not quite sure how this next month's going to play out, um, but uh, I will endeavour to get into the shake as, as much as I can. Um, the next step will be to uh, make up the uh, bandpass filter because at this stage of the game if I was just to reach back over into here um, we have our apologies for knocking that we've got our crystal filter I'll take off those two trim pots um, we've got the two uh, double balance mixers they're good to go uh, we've now got two IF amplifiers so we can start getting into the game of actually starting to build um, a radio here um, certainly from a receiver point of view that is but the bit I'm missing is the um, is the um, bandpass filter uh, before feeding into this so that's going to be the next step and what I'll probably do there is look to use again the appendices that come with um, solid state design for the radio amateur and just uh, go through those again um, they're nice and simple, uh, they work well, so, um, so why not do it again? Okay, 73, take care, and we will see you next time. Cheers all.